Hi, I'm here with Lulu. Lulu is a Yorkie puppy, and this is her second ever grooming. Um, I think she's about nine months old. She's very feisty. Um, very feisty, especially around the face. And much of that is due to the fact that she has done that wasn't nice. My light fell over. Most of that is due to the fact that she has double puppy teeth. And we expressed this to the owner last time and she said her vet doesn't want to remove them. And we can never, you know, dispute with the vet. But many times when they have these double teeth, they are very anxious around the face. Why? I don't know. It's just a fact. I know, Lulu. You're okay. So she tends to have temper tantrums when I go around the face and do certain things. And I'm just gonna, I know, I know, I'm just gonna work through her with it. I've already done her clipper work and I washed and dried her. On these little guys, I dry them straight from the tub so that their coat's in the best possible condition to scissor. She is going to get scissored. So like I said, when I go to work around the face, it's going to possibly look a little rough to hang on to her and get it done safely. I have to hold tightly to get it done safely because I don't, I don't want to use very sharp tools around the face with the dog throwing its head and those scissors are right by the eye. I have to keep a firm hold. So it doesn't mean I'm being mean and I'll praise her through it, but We'll see how this goes, right? Right? Yes. Okay, so I've got a harness on her with a grimmer's helper attaching her here to keep her in the center of the table. And I'm gonna start by scissoring off some of this top coat. Her owner said she's starting to look too grown up and that they would like her to keep her puppy look. Good girl, Lulu. She's an extremely smart puppy and really tiny, really smart, really cute little dogs tend to learn how to get out of doing things and they'll use their cuteness and their temper tantrums to do that. So if she starts to do that, I'm not gonna let her have it. Because I know she's smart. And I know she's using it. Right, you are. Very smart puppy. So I scissored off about an inch off the top line, and then I scissored off the underline and nothing in the middle. That gives it this nice natural puppy flow. She has an extremely silky coat. She's got a beautiful coat, beautiful color. Very nice quality little dog. Her head's a little dark, but I think it's breaking nicely and coming in nice and gold. Very nice quality puppy. and her owner keeps her brushed and combed perfectly. So she should be able to have any haircut she wants. Good girl, Lulu. So she thought the hair on the legs was too long, but she definitely does not want it too short. She expressed that. So typically when I think of a puppy trim, I think of what a three month old puppy would look like. Anywhere between eight weeks and three months is the look that I shoot for when somebody wants a puppy trim. 
And a lot of groomers will scream. They'll say, there's no such thing as a puppy trim. Never say puppy trim. I know. But I love puppy trims. And I call them puppy trims in my salon because I love doing them. And I like making dogs look like puppies. I was listening to one YouTube groomer not too long ago who was fussing about the whole puppy trim idea and she's like, never, ever, ever say puppy trim. No puppy trims ever, no, no, don't ever say a puppy trim. If you say you want a puppy trim, your dog will be bald. And she said that because she was picturing in her mind a newborn puppy, which has no hair. And I'm like, oh my word, that's not what people mean. Good girl. Let's turn you this way. So anytime I go up near her face, she starts pulling away and she uses her feet and pushes me off. And if she doesn't get her way, she'll start rolling and having an absolute temper tantrum. So if she starts that behavior when I go towards the face, just ignore it. It's one of those cases when people will say my puppy won't let me. And that's true, they don't let you, but sometimes you do have to be the boss. And a gentle, um, matter of fact, loving way. So one thing I've learned in trimming Yorkies is they're very tricky when it comes to blending the hair from the black into the gold. And it can come out looking really funny. So you never pick up this front leg and comb it down and then scissor it. Because if you do, you end up with this straight line across the black here. So I wanna keep that somewhat natural. So I keep the foot down and I pull back what I don't want, and I leave this. Same thing with the back legs. If I were to pull this leg up and scissor this, then I would end up with a line straight across here that looks awful. So I'm gonna keep the leg down and scissor it this way so that I keep this. And then this part, I'm gonna comb backwards. And I'm only doing this because a lot of groomers tend to ask how in the world you get this silky hair to look nice in a puppy trim and how you can hand scissor it and actually have it come out looking pretty. Yeah, so being a good girl is so proud of you. Yes. I do have her on a harness because she does get squirrely. She seems really good, but she has her moments when she's like, nope, you're not doing that. And I'm just going to be a crazy little girl for a minute. Yeah. You can be a crazy little girl sometimes, can't you? Yeah. So I've done the top line, scissored it off, done the underline, scissored it off. I blended the black parts going down to the gold parts on the legs. So now I'm going to take off a little bit of this side coat because I don't know if you can see it, but when you comb it up, it's got that puppy 
um, broken hair look. So, I don't know how this is gonna go with her. I'm gonna comb it up and scissor it off with the length of the back coat. But I'm careful not to pull up these parts blending into the legs. Good girl. Very good. I'm so proud of you. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I tipped her ears with a 15 blade. I scissored off under the tail. I didn't clipper it. Very jumpy when you get around the front end. I think that has to do with those double teeth. Hopefully the vet will agree to take those out. He even spayed her and left them in. And he knew they were there. I don't understand. But it's none of my business, is it? It's none of my business. That's between you and your doctor, right? Between you and your doctor, you guys make the decisions. Huh. So you're just a hairdresser lady. What do you know? Huh? Yeah. Hairdressers don't do help things. Right? If my daughter is watching, it's probably driving her crazy that I do baby talk to the dogs. All right, I'm gonna scissor around her ears. If she has a fit, I'm just going to ignore her fit. I'm not gonna coddle her through it. Good girl. Anytime she decides to get anxious around her face, I'm just gonna stay steady as a rock. I'm going to keep asking, and I'm not going to coddle her because she's smart. And coddling her will not help. It will only train her to keep doing the behavior. Good girl. As I go to get into the face is when she's going to start having little fits. Of course, I told you that, so she's going to prove me wrong, right? You're going to prove me wrong? Of course you are. Yeah. You're going to prove me wrong. That's okay. I want to be proved wrong. So for these little tiny dogs and these little tiny faces, I love these little tiny combs. It's made by Chris Christensen. It's a face comb. They're about $30, $40 and worth every penny. For the hair on top of the head, I'm going to pull it all up between my fingers. She's not going to like that, but that's okay. 
Gotta be done. I'm gonna pull it up like I'm gonna put it in a ponytail. I'm gonna pick it all up. And I trim it to about the same length as this part on her ears where it's been shaved. That gives a nice natural look to the top of the head. And I'm gonna scissor over the eyes. Good girl. Nothing too serious. Just a nice light scissor. And then that gives it a nice feathered look. So when they start pushing my hands away, and this is good for you to know at home if it's your pet too, I take my hands away. And you might think that that's rewarding that behavior, but it's not. Sometimes when a dog is being obstinate, they kind of enjoy the fight and they wanna, it becomes a game and they wanna do all this and do all this thrashing. When I pull my hands away and I step back and I take my eyes away, it ends the game. It, it, it's not rewarding the behavior. It doesn't work that way in my experience. So I, I want to, I will keep going back in and asking, but I give them nothing for the behavior. But when I get the behavior I want, then I lavish praise like this. Good girl. Yes, because she did the right thing and it was very, very good and then we get kisses and then we say, okay, back to work. All my dogs know that I groom that when I say back to work and she's just, she's new, so she's learning it, but I'll give lavish praise and then I say back to work. And that means, okay, it's time to back up and behave. Let me see. Is that a tangle or is it caught in the harness? I think it's caught in the harness. So I'm gonna comb all this up. Scissor are short underneath. Now I do all this part with straight scissors and I know a lot of people like to use thinning shears, but I think thinning shears are way too many cuts. You can go back and soften it with thinning shears if you want, but in my personal opinion, and all these are just my opinion, I'm not trying to teach anybody how to do anything. I'm just showing you what I do, but I like straights. So I'm combing this hair in front of the ears out and I'm just lightly scissoring to create that puppy flare. Good girl, you're being very good, I'm proud of you. Okay, so now behind the ears, I don't want too much heaviness of hair. So I'm pushing the ear down, pulling up the hair behind the ear and snipping it. Do you wanna lay down? That would be very nice. I would like that a lot. Okay, now you're gonna get back up. Yeah, it's okay, you'll lay down again. Push the ear down, comb up the hair and snip. Oh, you're being so good. Yeah. Right. Good puppy. Very good. 
And now I'm going to hold up the ears. Let's see if it's balanced. Just keep checking and rechecking. I like to give them time to shake their head so that I can see where it falls naturally. Good girl. Is she getting sleepy? Oh, she's tired. You see her eyes shutting. She wants a nap. No, oh, honey. I'm sorry. This is a big day for a little puppy. Yeah. All right. Tidy it up with them. the new chairs now. All right, wait. So I'm gonna comb everything forward. Off the front of the face. Take my thinning shears and take off a little bit of this mustache. So it has more of that rounded puppy look. Good girl. That's very, very, very good. That's very, very, very good. So after her, my next client is already here three full-coated Bichons. They come every two weeks, so their coat stays in good condition. And I adore them. They're one of my best clients. They take wonderful care of me. Very, very, very nice people. I do have the best clients ever. I love my people, and I love my puppies. All right, let's see what you're looking like. Eh, pretty good. One thing you'll notice with Yorkies, they always have this chin hair that splits down the middle, and it always makes it look off. I don't know if you can see it. It's like the hair is pretty even, but you got this part with a split right in the middle. So I'm going to take all this and comb it up because I don't like the way that's looking. Use my thinning shears if she'll let me because it's a lot of snips. So now you can see it taking on that three month old puppy look. That's so cute when you see a picture of a Yorkie puppy and they have that perky little cute rounded face. She's starting to get that now where she was starting to look like an adult. All right, now I'm take off her harness, work on her free. Don't worry, I'll have a really good hold on her. Got twisted. There we go. Yeah, that's a good girl. That was a very good puppy. Oh, you were so awesome. Okay, don't get all squirrely. So 
none of these neck and shoulders has been done yet. I'm going to pull all this up. Mm -mm -mm. We don't miss any of them. Right there. Good. Good girl. That's perfect. That's perfect, honey. I don't have to see what I'm doing with her standing up right now because I'm combing it up to match the hair on the back. So I can do this with her taking a rest. She's a baby and it's nap time, so I'm not going to make her stand up right now. That wouldn't be fair. And I want her to learn relaxation because she is a hyper puppy. So this is perfect. I'm okay with that. We're getting closer. Sometimes clients think a light trim on a little tiny dog is like really easy and they should get a discount. But as you can see, it actually takes quite a bit of effort and skill to accomplish. It's no easy task. I like just snipped off just a little. I don't see what the big deal is, right? Just a little. They're like, I don't want to, not her owner, but some clients will say, I don't want a full trim. I don't want her like short. I just want a little trim. A little trim is much harder, believe me. And that's why if somebody comes back and they say, can you just take off a little bit more? I'm like, it's a whole other grooming appointment. And they're like, but I just want it this much shorter. And I'm like, mm, nope. <laughs> Tell me next time, give me an exact measurement. So you can say, I want the dog exactly one inch long. And I'm like, okay, I can measure that. Or you can say, I want it two inches long. I can measure that. If you say, I don't know, do what you think. I'm going to do my own thing. All right, where are we at? handmade these while we were in quarantine. Aren't they cute? They were hand sewn. Takes about 10 minutes a bow. So when I have time to hand make these pretty little bows, I do. Customers can tend to get spoiled on them, but I don't always have time to do that. So I spoil my customers when I can. But not all the time. Not all the time. No. Alright, you gonna let me do this? Hey. Where you? Uh, uh, uh. Do I need to put the harness?
this on for this? Probably should. I probably should. How about this? You want to lay down? Lay down. 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 Lay down. Good girl, stay. Sometimes putting a bow in is much easier if the dog's in or down. Because they don't have the room to thrash their head around. So if you work on your dog at home, you like to put up a top knot or anything in the dog's hair, teach them to downstay first. And if you ever put a bow or rubber band in a dog's head, always, always, always take a comb, slide it between the band and the neck, I mean, between the band and the head, Make sure your pins come out the other side because it's very easy to catch a little piece of skin up there. You don't want to do that. So now I'm just going to check over her and make sure she's neat. And I must move on to the Bichon family. And the nice thing about puppy cuts is they don't have to be perfect because puppies aren't perfect. Puppies don't have perfectly even hair. They kind of have a shaggy, scruffy, cute look. And for now, I'm just going to keep a natural tail on her. I trimmed it underneath, and that's about it. All right, I see your underside doesn't look so good. So let's pick you up. See what's going on under here. Her hair is so wispy and thin on her tummy. I just scissored it short. I didn't. I didn't shave it. It's no need. There's hardly anything there. Right, so the very last thing I'm going to do is turn on the table with the light, because with the light under her, I can see this gold hair better. And and right. 
So there we have it. Where's your brain? Look over here. Good girl. Good girl. So there she is. A Yorkie puppy trim. All right, Lulu. Say bye. I want you so bad that it aches And it's you